Welcome to the fastest chaos qualifiers. We've got Guras Toby Bufas in the green playing as the Berbers in game one, and we have Smart Guy Aoi playing as the Orange Dravidians. And you, as we can already somewhat guess from the buildings, trying to avoid being close to the TC that we are not casting that experienced deathmatch players here. We are casting C31, C34, both um, probably very experienced in RM or have played a lot of RM games, but didn't have many DM games played. E.g. when the seating was done, they played zero DM ranked games. So that's why they are where they are in the seating, playing a best of three to start out in the qualifiers in order to advance to the main qualifier round, which is best of five. Uh, early castle here and the range is quite far away from the TC. A little bit better. Yeah, I, I actually don't mind the build order from Guras Toby Bufas too much here. I mean, this phrase space is a bit odd, but the buildings are most of them spaced one tile away, two tiles away from the TC. Isn't too shabby. And we are starting Camel Cavalier Infantry mix there. Not really sure what he will meet yet. Now it is Elephant Archer straight away without any habitus. And Smart Guy is getting a little bit lucky by the map chain here. Taking a look at it. Big forest in the middle means that Goras Toby Bufas can't rush that hard with the Berbers. And uh, we have to fight in two areas on the map on the left and the right. Which should be good for the Sith that has better death ball potential here in the Dravidians. Yeah, it is one of the map trends that we specifically asked to avoid, but it is apparently not that easy with the Iber and the script. It is good for a smart guy, and I think for like. This level, it could make the game more fun. Um, Ekman, they're working away as well. Obviously, Berber Champion's not the most impressive thing here. Should also not do too great against the Rumi Swords. When Guoso Bivupas, I think, needs quick castles and Camel Archers to deal with this. But we don't see a Camel Archer in production yet. Two castles are up, but not producing. And as long as it, this is only Camels and Champions, the Ele Archers should have quite the easy time here for Mr. Smart Guy, who's adding more castles at home now. Bit of eco expansion there, both at quite low build count. Still only adding one TC each, which uh, isn't normally what we see in DM. In DM, it is normal to add seven to nine town centers after your starting build order, but. Maybe focusing on the army a bit more. Yeah, it's getting micro now. Should have an easy time to clean up the infantry. Welcome in, Mr. Torbo. How are you getting on? More TCs here now coming from Guras Pubibufa, so he's somewhat listened to me. But the elephant archers, he still isn't thinking about them. Even though I think they would be great against the elephant archers over here. Thanks for the follow, SMV Blue Star. Quite some slaughter there by the Ele Archers. The Siege Tower that they started with. Mm, joining the party to catch some arrow fire. I love that players are using that and it can somewhat act as a Siege Ram equivalent. Um, but that was fall to the Ele Archers. And now the Camel Archers are finally on the field for Goras Tobi Bufas. Should give him better fights, but probably not in these numbers. Only seven of them on the field. Hill bonus for the Elephant Archers as well. Elephant Archer Urumi will go on full cool unit here. For smart guy, I really want to see, would want to see some siege by him though. Like, uh, order to push at least trebuchets, but better also some siege archers or bombard cannons would be good for the Dravidian player here. Both people ignoring the left side of the map besides a siege tower being used for scouting. Also a valuable purpose for it. And I feel like the Berber kind of wants to use mobility and play on both sides. The Dravidian should be happy with just fighting on one side trebuchets now. Being added, well, one trebuchet has been added, but this castle has been stopped at 60%, and the elephant archers wrecking the base here. Don't really care about TC arrow fire with this unit. Now, massive or a little bit more massive engagement. Goras Pobi Bufas got some army together and it's challenging this again, but I still don't think that's a great fight for the player in the green. 
And smart guys, Elephant Archers, probably still able to dominate here. Yeah, there is 20 Camel Archers now, but 68 Elephant Archers are probably still better against 20 Camel Archers. Siege on just would probably seal the deal for this push if smart guy is thinking of adding them. Some people are still trying to get into DM. We have 50 signups for the tournament. I think that's a little bit more than some people. Mm. And that is like factoring in that it's a tournament that is also with pros. So I think that is at least quite some people trying. And um, one trebuchet now, finally, more trebuchets being added. Camels are acting a bit as a meat shield here. Gold counts, still looking good here, but no farm economy, so no more elephant archers besides the 13 in the queue. Now some farms being placed, and indeed we let farm space around the main DC. Oh, that's so sweet to see that in the um, uh, EG. It's bad, right? Don't do that, but it looks nice. Um, also, the blue fast with a better will count. And now, with making camel archers, he can maybe stop that push. There's no additional unit, no unit to counter the camel archers coming. Skirmishers might even be valuable addition here. I'm really crying out for siege archers, but um, it doesn't look geared towards me seeing them. Um, I think Smart Guy wins the game if he just places like five siege workshops over here and makes some um, SO to counter the camel archers but the elephant archers still doing quite fine against the camel archers actually mocked up this whole group trebuchets are in higher numbers now speeding up the push maybe smart guy will still win army supply massively ahead villager number down though Udiko now they're trickling in for both a lot of villagers on gold and uh, no one would for smart guy but you don't really need that if you're not using the market with trebuchets there is a market and the market has been used. He sold down uh, the wood. Did he sell down or did it support? Let's see who used the market. Yeah, smart guy did. That's obviously the market jump there. And smart guy selling a bit of his wood. Really like that. Um, he's obviously not using it for the sea drivers I want to see. Um, but at least it gives him more gold to play with. And cleans up these castles here. Another castle coming up here for Guras Toby Bufas to slow this down a bit. He has 99 villagers, a lot of them in this threatened north corner. Now the elephant archers are going to follow one camel archer and the traps are exposed. No, I think there's like half of them is like relatively new. There's also a lot of high ranking RMS in the tournament. Playing DM for the first time. There are at least eight, like 2K RMs that I think playing their first, uh, or 2K plus RMs that are playing their first Deathmatch tournament here. Yeah, now um, Smarka has to retreat. Villagers standing around here. Now they're using this Hussa meat shield, yeah, and Hussa camel archer beats an only elephant archer composition. So siege onagers are very needed and probably some heavies as well. One unit is just not a unit comp and regularly loses two unit comps even though elephants are still elephants. So pretty fine here. Um, but I think if, if Smart Guy keeps playing only elephant archers, he will be grinded down without too much progression. So it's starting to look better and better for Kuras Tobi Bufas, who's also up to 42 farms. So the, um, I think in this stage of the game, the ELO difference in RM is coming into play. Kuras Tobi Bufas is, I think, around 15, 1600, while Svaka is 1200 something. Um, and it's a bit close, getting a bit closer to somewhat of uh, RM late game now. To a part of the game where RM uh, late game skills are helping and then we have a 300 elo advantage for Goras Tobi Bufas it's now on the regular Berber post imp composition um, Usar and Camelatra he's pop cap as well quite a bit of an overboom there 150 wills 
but a heavy underboom by the Dravidian player, who is making the more expensive units as well. Skirmish has now been added in, all right. That is not too bad either. I think Siege Ranger would be better, but Skirmish will also help. Uh, problem is the overall army size is going heavily down now. Made it to 30 farms, which is good. But Elephant Hunter is just not really the unit right now, I think. Uh, cost effectively, or cost effective wise, the Camel Archers should be trading better here, even up the hill. And Guras is pushing this back now. I really thought Smart Guy had a window there, but looks like the window is closing. Uh, he could have another window if he changes his army comp, though, and I think on this still level, it's still possible. It's an overboom, but still far away from an boom. It's closer to an auto boom than I get these days. No relic connection, I want to say no. Ghost to be Bufas actually did start on the relic side of things and it's collecting this one as well. I think for someone being new to DM 22 minutes is quite a decent relic timing. Oh, he looked. What? What happened to his starting TC? Was that Trips or did he delete it? Never traps around here. We'll probably use traps. Well, let's wait until you, we see my matches in the tournament, right? I hope I didn't speak too soon and I will do it again. <laughs> if Smart Guy wins the set, I'm, I'm playing tonight 20 GMT. It does look like Horas for Bufa, so at least take game one here. Its population is down to 80 and smart guy doesn't really have another thought than going full alien archer here which is not really going to work ignoring the cheaper siege for the dravidians completely no no he thought of it i have cheaper siege i have siege monitor he made workshops maybe this game isn't over it's looking quite bad now. There's already bombard cannons out on the field. But I like that he is at least showing us that he, he's thinking of Sidron just now. Um, also, outposts here. Also, he has really nice vision and map control. Love the outposts. Look at that. He sees all of the map besides the base and like, it's not the middle of the forest. But that's a really good play by Guras Povibufas. For what is he waiting? For the opponent to have a decent army combat. So they can have a fair fight. Yeah, he's a bit slowly taking out these buildings. But he has the hill here, right? The hill that Smart Guy used earlier. So right now it's Smart Guy fighting under the hill. And Grosso Buff is also thinking a bit about this. Yeah, there's a massive amount of villagers. Monk should bring the relic back. That relic is being stolen though, so really good job on Grail Collection. And we'll get the hill to the south of Smart Guy's base at all. Again, and then with Smart Guy's expansion being pushed back here and never really expanding to the south, he will be in a hole crashed between two hills to attack him from. Which means Grosso Buff isn't really in a hurry. He's getting relics, he has map control, he has the central hills. There's no need to rush things for a Berber player. He would be easily able to rush things if he defeats like 18 villagers, maybe 28 villagers. Um, resource looking kind of decent, but no gold. No villagers on gold. Doesn't look like there was too much gold on the map. Not something I focused on in the opening. Stone still being mined here by a smart guy who also has still access to some gold. Let's see how the sea hunters are doing. Divisions losing? I was winning. Indeed, I guess you like both sims. Combat cannons shooting at the Onagers. And the Camel Archers are around as well. Onage is a bit hard to see after the castle here. Taking out some of the Camel Archers, but the Bombard cannons are on prowl. And... Can we get a shot on the Bombard cannons? Skirmishers blocking their own seat unit. And Bombard can get away with their life. Very optimistic castle by Guras Tobi Bufas. Villager gets killed and castle gets denied. Um, deleted it though. First check the rest when I saw that castle. 
All my pants are still around, but not too much in front of them anymore. I'd really like to see the 9k food here used for Kuros Hobi Pufas, as it is mainly a skirm army now. And right now, skirm army is kind of countering all the units here, not really the castle. But there are trebuchets or, or trap pathfinding is hell, but maybe it's actually good that they're here, right? That is the same innovation from here would be checking up hell. This castle now going up and the encirclement of smart guy will soon be complete. Squished in between two fronts here, but squishing a bit out on the northern front. Shout in the sky to help smart guy. I really had to stretch how I spoke there to be able to uphold a rhyming scheme there. Well, that's decent. Shout in the sky to help smart guy. Maybe it does work. Shout in the sky to help smart guy. Yeah, if you, if you use that pattern it works too. I guess it's fine. But I can't accept the first one of Regni. It destroys the whole fun. I have to find a high in the super. There are the Hussar. And it will be trouble for the Skirms. Two more trebuchets coming. I'm gonna take out that castle. In a good position. Um, the lack, complete lack of Helvidius is weird when fighting Berbers. Even the forward farming, there are three castles. What? What is this huge forward base? He really doesn't want him to leave to the back door. The last two people is kind of performing a police raid on, on smart guy here. As his uh, colleagues guarding the uh, um, back entrance. But the front is being ramped down, or rather trebuchet down. So Kuras might be able, uh, Sake might be able to leave at the front door. But not really. So there's still army and another castle getting placed on that hill. I like, really like that Kuras will move spinning stone. Uh, Kuras isn't too bad. Let's see. I have to play the winner of this set. Any news on a potential silver leak? Mm, nothing besides what was said. So there will be one. We will announce the details when there is something to announce. Well, now concentrate on qualifying, guys. Police raid, police raid. Oh my god, imagine like the Landes Kriminalamt has a Twitch channel and raids. Would be frightening. Is there a potential bronze league? We, you're the first one to ask that question, and we have not thought about it. But there's always a potential for everything, so. It is a slim potential. Dark League? Uh, you mean a league where only you're playing? Okay, now trying to escape here in the south. I mean, he's still alive. 40 minutes of game time. As the Camelot was too amazing. And actually, if the gold runs out... Yeah, but if the gold runs out, there's also no Elia to say. AKR raid. Yeah, I really don't want to have that, I think. Slim potential means some potential, and some potential means confirmed Lord's League. Hmm. I wonder where in your chat message the logical flaw is. Palms getting the knight here at the top, and a relic as well. 
Uh, still arrive at the Hussar raiding part. We arrive at the G to the G part. Gura's Pobi Bufas takes game number one with Berbers against Dravidians. With um, taking a bit to get to Camel Archers, but then getting to Camel Archers and uh, Siege on a edition way too late, in my opinion, by Smart Guy. And uh, yeah, good expansion. Uh, better eco development. 78 farms plus a nice encirclement here by the Berbers. Take a look at the statistics. 40 minute game, so already a closer one. And I think there was a moment where Smart Guy was almost winning. If he just had uh, some siege to back his push up, either um, elephant, I call they called um, uh, armored elephants, or siege elephants rather, or siege rangers, then I think smart guy could have finished the game here where his army like in between ten minute mark maybe, but in the longer game the Berber prevailed. The RM skills of Kobe Bu Guras Toby Bufas came in to play. Better economy as well. Bit of an overboom, but better over than under. And the Dravidians lose to the Berbers. Not the worst thing in the world for Smart Guy, as it was his fourth pick against the second pick of his. And Bricks in the house. Hey yo. Saw you play earlier. Let's see if they're already in game two. Right, I might miss it like we missed the one game yesterday, right? They aren't, but we know the Sims. I know what this is, you don't. I want the Scandinavia game. And looks like we've got the case coming out against the top. Tarsia, tell me what you think. Who would you would rather play in the settings? Here? What? Imagine if I lose a league that only me myself is playing. A rotten trash league, so I can finally participate. You could play in Silver League directly. I think you would have good chances in the Silver League. Um, seems like I'll have to, to attack the only one that is stuck in the one with the steel chair. Against the nice guy, yeah. You'd like to play the Tars, but cats might be better. Mm, yeah, I think cats are better. Tars can do something against cats if it's like an open map. But they don't get bombard cannons. Their water is significantly worse. And yeah, obviously the siege department overall is a bit lacking. And besides uh, the good traps, but I don't think that helps too much against Kels. I don't think a rotten trash leak is too enticing for more players than you. So what are you guys in chat are basically saying is you each want your own league. So you can say you want a league. That's not how leagues work. I think you would dominate the Silver League, I agree. Yeah, Hamza, I looked at the scheduling problem where I can not do anything more than messaging your opponent. Like either he shows up or you get an admin. And we're into game two! <laughs> TC start and kind of a Tatar dream map here. Everything is open. Wood is slim. Um, but we're actually not seeing Tatars. That was pre-spectular mistakes. 
They're seeing Lithuanians against Kells, and I think Lithuanians have the even worse matchup here, but it's also uh, one of the better maps that the Lithuanians would pop for, surely. Build order wise, yeah. Uh, also, again, quite a decent build order, I think, from Guras Tobi Bufas. Also, queuing builds from both PCs. And these back row of barracks, really not what I'm loving here by a smart guy. Um, but seed workshops already on the field. TC's not fully cute, but also using both of them. Predictions are up. So bet your rocks on who will win game two here. And what if instead of calling it Silver League, we call it Rotten Trash League? I'm not, I won't be the one admining the Silver League, so I think it's better if you talk to other admins about the Silver League, but um, eh, I, I, I don't think the majority of the players would want to play Rotten Trash League. Um, mining camps. Oh boy. So if you don't know, in... in, in like camps in Deathmatch are really not that much use. Um, it, pretty much everything that a camp can do, a TC can do better, and you should be able to afford it as well. Uh, rush rise, no rush. Now the first rush paladin from the Lithuanian comes in, instantly finds a kill. Rush should also not be that strong with two TC starts, so the two TC starts should be good for the Kelt over here. The slimness of wood, though will be troublesome for Kells if they can't win with like a big push between the 10 and 20 minute mark. Lots of idols and some housedness here for Gurus to be boofers, but now the castle finishes. No monasteries on the field yet to collect those also important relics for the Lithuanians. Bombard cannons being added there against the Kelt siege. That makes a lot of sense. Um, pretty much no base development of our map control in the first five minutes here. And a uh, very exciting help versus help fight. You can't believe you voted for the guy building a mining camp instead of a TC. Rip duck killer one. But you trust in the Celts, I guess, against the Lithuanians. A lot of scorpions on the field. No SO. Looks like smart guy is an SO hater. Um, not making them last game and only scores. Yeah, mixing in a few scores can be good, but it's mainly cavalry sieve, right? So scores not the greatest against paladins and as well, micro five, yeah, kind of good against all melee units in DM as well. Not that I expect people just start playing DM to micro them perfectly, but oh, that's a really nice raid by Gorings for Wufa Store. That castle isn't built, and the villagers have no TC to hop in because we have a mining camp there only. And henceforth, there will be quite some damage, but quick reaction there yeah, with the Halberdier. So, yeah, really like the reaction timing here, though, by Smart Guy. Well done. Ooh, and that castle is very optimistic. These much least optimistic castles should go up in time. Yeah, have it. He's trying to interrupt it now, but it is too late. Who else Toby Bufas gets this castle up, which uh, means this castle will not go up. I hope Smart Guy realizes and places the castle somewhere else. Also, oh, the only siege that he has with this poster scorpions, no siege ramp, so he can't really attack with this army. Here's a little bit like last game. The building killing siege is missing once more. Habit is all being produced to the back now. We had that quick reaction, but you can see the problem with placing gather points for where you get raided. That is a lot of idle population now. And oh no, everything's running into the castle at the front. Yes, mining camps is new DM meta. Every one of my opponents, please make them. Oh boy, Scorpions might be a siege unit. They're not a unit to siege castles with. And there's even Bombard Cannons around. Well, ah, they took out the Bombard Cannons, so at least getting some value. I guess. And the castle for Smart Guys also up. Castle is attacking the other castle too. So a little bit of a kissing castle situation here. World Raiders being made out of that. I would much prefer to see traps here. Okay, there's sea traps. Some sea traps. Four sea traps, but even more Scorpions. I guess uh, Kelts go. This is the main approach here. They're actually not doing too bad in the fights. I mean, KD is in front for Smart Guy. 
What a new number two DM German player? Hopefully so. After the tournament. I know I won't beat Keller, so I'm very happy with number two. Just gotta beat Nilly for that, right? Number two German caster? I thought I was dead already. After Zayu. That's what I already said, Zayu. And I... Well, it's actually not going to be champion for smart guy here, right? Now he has the sea gem on the field, he has the scorpions, resources are still looking good. Hasn't really spent that much and uh, Gross Hobby Goofa's throwing so much into the scorpion meat grinder here is out of food. Um, Onagers, well, his own Onagers would have been really good. Or more Bombard cannons. Two more in the queue, but two Bombard cannons aren't really the big amount that he needs. Exception wise, really funny extension, I guess. That's not funny, it's try trying to castle gold. Right. That's good actually. And uh, by Gross trying to get some gold control over on the map. The map looks so weird on the mini map. Hives against the castle, new meta. Yeah, meta is getting shaped here at the. Uh, Three qualifier round. Ah, scorpions. I mean, it's a full on killed scorpion meta. Which also is meta, but it's working. They're even taking out their nemesis, the bombard cannons. Because their bigger nemesis, the onagers, isn't on the field. And yeah, have to look at that castle. There's no trap. There's nothing attacking that castle but I have it is. And it's into castle. It works economy wise uh, 38 was one and seven bit bigger by go so we move us again but this time we have a farm set up for the cat player and he's actually ahead with the farms and now even adding in trebuchets and at least five more seed ramps queued um yeah smart guy is playing this decently has a cal siege death ball in the middle the, the thing that should kill lithuanians Lithuanians, in my opinion, should use their mobility a little bit more. I mean, we have these nice map control cartels, but other than that, no real movement of Goras Tobi Bufas to anywhere than trying to defend the push here. And he, uh, yeah, wasted a lot of units into those scorps. Currently having only three RB on the field to 110. Team game fastest Chaos Cup. Hmm. Yeah, you don't know. Might be nice, yeah. I'm more of the 1v1 tournament host, but. Oh, help him in game. Remember, you don't want to see him. Help who, though? The guy with one army or the guy with 100 army? That Dark Killamon bet on. I think Dark Killamon doesn't, maybe doesn't have to enter the game to get some points here. 100 pop against 200, smart guy. Is using the kills how they are meant to be used, normally with more SO, but they're using a Siege Death Ball. And uh, Scorp Ram, actually, it's easier to micro, right? It's easier to micro and against Lithuanians, not that bad, really. Especially since the Lithuanians aren't making their own onagers at all. I think they would need against this army comp. It's kind of weird to make Lithuanian. No siege engineers, regular onagers against uh, Kels, but it is, uh, it is what is needed and the food eco. Four champs won't really defend 50 scorpions, my man. And the Rams are doing work, even being loaded up. That's nice to think of that. Something that most DM players don't have time to do. But um, this level you probably have more time. Mainly you have more time if your opponent has two army. He is pushing. Come on, this game is pushing. He's doing it better than you, Dark. It was you and Ragnarok Mantic. Yeah, I remember. I I remember.
It, it's your auto overboom. Hesitation. But no hesitation for a smart guy. Trebuchet is also working. Castle's falling to the Rams. And Lightus have an anti bonus against Siege. So, not the greatest unit in this circumstance. They're still, probably the best unit they can field against everything melee and the cavalry against the scorpions. But the heaviest there in the ramps, around the ramps, really doing work at protecting the siege push. And the base is falling on multiple fronts there. Castle being attacked, the whole base being taken down. Traps were taken out here. One trebuchet only working away on that castle. Three villagers, not enough to out repair that, however. No more traps coming. Massive scorpion cues. Smart guy really in love with the Kelt scorps. And um, I mean, since the opponent doesn't get an army mass up, they are kind of invincible right now. Also, siege workshops have fallen. Well, one siege workshop, one bomber can is still alive. Killing some scorpions, but I think they are getting produced quicker than they are getting killed. Another castle falls at the front ramps now on the town center. And uh, starting TC also taken out. You need to preserve your history so free players will have someone to be inspired by when they see you as the new number one. Alright. Inspiring yeah, darkness. Hey, it's trying to <laughs> so it was trying to repeat game one. Making a massive castle base at the side and uh, sending some parents to raid, but sending them in one by one will probably mean they are dying to the castles. Um, yeah. This raid will do no damage. You need to gather them before you raid. And strongholds, castles everywhere, also healing infantry. The base is being cleared. Nice villager count, but not so nice for Gura Sobibufas. Rather nice for Smart Guy that its opponent has only 69 villagers. And it looks like we're going to a game 3 here. Rates haven't done anything. Base building quite compact there. 17 farms now needs a bit more of that as he's running out of food. Nobody collected relics in this game. Another castle was built here, but Rams with 6 people inside are quite speedy nowadays. It's not being blocked by Adblock block ahead Twitch. Yeah, they made them better again. Yeah, but like all the money that I get from Dark Killermon, right? Having a bad ad block off. How I'm gonna survive without that? You want an auto starving? Kappa, last castle here in the base under siege now by uh, Smart Guy. This scorpion ball is still alive on spread formation. So, I mean, he's somewhat afraid of his opponent making onagers because he's using them in spread formation all the time. But his opponent isn't making onagers, so they would actually be safer if they're not on spread formation. Mm, we do have this base there by Gorto Mufas, who has a trap push there now. Uh, could turn the game, Smart Guy doesn't realize about it, but I think Smart Guy is killing his opponent's face quicker. Last castle falls here, that's the whole farm economy. And yeah. every person that is using Adblock here, Little Otter has to die. Or TikTok has to die. What? Why does TikTok have to die? If <laughs> three Adblock is not good, that's a rip. Uh, Guras Tobi uh, will at least kill a castle forward and relocate economy here, but uh, Mills having a bit of the same issue as camps um, in terms of a TC would just be better. Resource actually not too shabby for Guras Tobi Bufas still, he just has no base. Uh, at least he doesn't have much population, so he's not pop locked when he will lose his houses. I don't know if that's a good thing though. Um, a little bit iffy farming eco here in the south as well, but I guess he's not leaving because he has the push and he has devil ships! He made a dock somewhere! Oh my god, you could make a dock here and the devil ships can traverse that brown land. I didn't think about it, but yeah, we have devils. Let's go.
There you are, keep. All light is for in the game. It's more than four now. Fourteen. Start the game already. Light is for one died now. Now it's fourteen again. Sixty-nine villagers. Fourteen light is. What do we need more, guys? And <laughs> what got it? But uh, of course, the Wipupa's playing this out towards the base trade. Is there a reaction? Barely any, right? Yeah, a few habitats being spammed into there now, but all coming one by one. Mm, Scorpion army and everything is clearing that, killing farms over here. 55 villagers only left for Gorosto Wipupa's economy. We will be found. That kind of means he only has this top base remaining, but he still has a strong push. Now out of food, out of wood income. Um, but uh, Grosso Buffers surely not one for giving up, it seems. Quite some heavy commitment there to finish the game at a 2-0 count there. Scorpions are being idle. All the army is idle. All the pop is not really home. Can Gura somehow win this? Laters are better than Paladin against everything melee. Against ranged units, Paladins are better. And scorpions in defense. Southern economy has survived. Oh, something was killed here. What the? And are we reproducing villagers? Yeah, but we went up to 60. Nice again. Now the army is appearing at the top, but once again, no siege with it. Where are the trebuchets? Where is the one ram? I guess the one ram is there, and the trebuchets are. Yeah, I guess it's new trebuchets to go check this place, but you would also need some trebuchets at home. Where the lighters are a bit dying now, or the lighters are coming back. Where are the lighters? Where are the 24 lighters? They are going to middle base. Well, there's also some gold and a lot of production for a smart guy. Interesting, right? We moved around the map a lot. Uh, smart guy started here, but now has kind of his main base in the middle of the map. Uh, Gwaso Wupa started here and has half his base here and half his base over here. Is Scoffs enough to kill castles? I don't think Scoffs can cast kill castles in any number. But there are two rams coming. Once again, garrison rams as well, so uh, faster attacking and they're attacking anyways faster because they can't rams. That's quite nice. From Snuffles coming in, asking the important questions. Smart guy might be sexy, but only down to 60 wills as well. Oh boy, is, is Gura's to view us really coming back? I'm still hype casting, right? It's 9 army against 129. And the southern economy. Scorpions just diving the castle. I, I, I guess Scorpions can dive castles. How many Scorpions? We have 94! 94 Kelt Scorpions on the field. I don't think I've ever seen 94 Scorpions being on the field in a GM game at the same time. Probably not even by if we count both players together, I've seen it. Or all eight players in the probably one team. Let alone one player having 94 scorpions. 101 scorpions! 101 scorpions! <laughs> They're taking out the town center. Well, we do have ships. We do have galleons now. I think they both might be better here. No of the scorpions. No caravels. The no scorpions of the sea. But Scorpion's kind of on the sea or on the muddy waters. One castle remaining here still. Does Smart Guy know about it? Yeah, it's firing at his racks. He should. Uh, no relics still. Were there, was there a monastery that was killed or something? Really, right? Lithuanian's just not getting relics. Now he's thinking about it. That's a bit late. I think Smart Guy will clear up the south now and then. Game. Should be over. Team game for sure? 
Nej, jeg mener, jeg skal smøre. Right. Ja, det er sgu smøre vores. Probably ikke smøre vores, for det er så meget den der. 96 Kaleskops, og 100 Kaleskops. Got to respect the resilience of course I am, but I think we're losing this phase this time. Time to end the resilience. Answer for his crimes. Oh, I don't know, picking Lithuanians. Oh, like, he, he could have been more active around the map. That's where uh, Toby, uh, Buras, Toby, Bufas, or GTB could have done better. No, I think it's microing that on a dot. Yeah, it's microing that on a dot. It's so funny, right? In both games, one of the players really needed on a dot. And then they're always making on it just when they're basically dead. Kuras is more dead here than Svarke was last game. This teen is a queen who isn't mean. Get hurt laying on a bean. If you want, but less to support. Green! Ah, that's the bean. Better let than ever. G to the G and uh, probably meant the very interesting and complex taunt there by Ragnarok. Going over to qualifying it. As we're all about qualifying today. And we have a one one set we have ourselves a series the first close set of the fastest chaos everybody where we had basically 100 scores for orange versus no army for was first for most of the game after he threw a lot of infantry and cavalry into the score meat grinder here between minute 13 and minute 4. and economy development actually smart guy ahead as well but uh, I think originally Guras was a bit quicker, but then Smart Guy was better quicker on farms, and then obviously Smart Guy killed Guras base first. After Guras mounted a nice last attempt push from the top against his opponent. A really nice game, actually. And the pure Kale score strat working out that was uh, quite interesting and uh, very fun to see. It's the first pick for Smart Guy winning over the last pick for Lithuanians. So, Tatars and Vikings still for Guas Toby Bufas, but against Persians and Khmer. So, can Smart Guy finish the set with some Santos? That is the question. Or will Goras find out about Flaming Camels? Or will he pick Vikings and lose if he doesn't get Waterman? If it comes from Kwai, uh, that one works only if we uh, use two languages. Like one, one set here. This one. We know if this plays me in the next qualifying round. Yeah, what do you think they'll, they'll go now, Silverwise, right? Has to be Tatars for Guras. I mean, probably their early picks, right? Tatars against Persians, I would assume. And... I'm not sure who wins it. On this... 
the unit comms they are using are a bit weird, right? So it's hard to predict what will happen. Vikings get completely stomped here. Vikings get completely stomped by Persians and Khmer, so I would be very surprised if Goras picks Vikings. I mean, Vikings, if it's in, like a pure water generation, right, then Vikings are obviously fine against everything, but they would be like betting on getting water, which I think is ill advised, because a pure water map doesn't have that high chances of appearing, and you're the higher seed, you don't want that coin flip, right? And Tatars with like early raids, early aggression, can have decent matchups against these two, but will struggle against the elephants unless they make flaming camels. And if they make flaming camels, that's probably fine. Vikings beat Persians. I don't know. I I would like to play that, yes. I, I'm I kind of have a soft spot for Vikings, right? And I, I think Persians are gruesomely strong, but I don't like to play them. So I just fear them. Um, so I would actually enjoy playing Vikings against Persians on landing. Um, I don't think it's a specifically good matchup. Okay, maybe they forgot to send me the code. Maybe the game is already ended again. I, I should. I'm not getting an answer. How many swords pick everything? Yeah, they're into... Wait, what? Slavs? Mayans? That can't be right. They did neither draft that. Okay, it isn't Slavs, Mayans. So good. I don't know why Spectatbot says that. But we're fine! It is the two sims we expected, I expected at least. We don't see Vikings! We see Tatars. And we don't see Khmer. We see Persians. And we do see an odd color switch here. Um, Matka was orange. Orange and red is really bad, so I'm gonna make Kuras. What was he last game? Can I actually see that somewhere? Uh. Can't. Which color was uh, Gura's last game? Green? I think it was green, right? Was my guess that's orange. Gura's goes green. And... Yeah, and yeah, we've got Persian cells ready. We're working on a castle, smart guy. Um, still building far away from the TC, but... I think nobody has told him that yet, that that's a bad idea, so not surprised to see it change here. Map-wise, we have a very close spawn, both kind of in the middle of the map, should be great for the Tatars. Also an oddly ordered build order by Gurasobi Bufa, it's kind of not using some of his good space options here for spacing buildings. Yeah, it looks really nice, it looks a bit like a campaign base. But if you say in a competitive game that something looks like a campaign base, it's usually not a compliment, I'm afraid. Wild Elephants already out working on the second castle which was aren't walled in. Cavalier start is also actually the right call here, I guess. Because there's like no buildings for smart guy. Smart guy, what? Are, why are we starting ranges? We're starting... What? Why are we not starting Hamilton against the Tars? We're starting Crossbow? Oh my god, yeah, he wants elephants, commander, and crossbow, because you know that's a comp, but... You need to survive, man! You can't survive the cavalry rush with crossbows. Well, he somewhat survived it. Also, somewhat didn't, though. Lost eight villagers there. No treadmill crane for the Persians. Means they have a slow, a slow start. It's also very open here. Everything 
bit or not really closing anything off but two castles are up and the elephants are out and as long as this second unique unit of the tatars is not found out about there is kind of no counter to war elephants only helps that really aren't optimal but elephants not fighting would also counter the elephants a bit here um economy will be tough to get up for smart guy with only seven villagers losing more there on his extra tc that he made on wood the resource you kind of need the least with the persians um did we see any markets we did Let's see who was talking with us uh having villagers it's not a market and yeah, now Cavalier shouldn't probably engage into this head on. Um, Havidius, I said Havidius. Um, so they like somewhat can work. It's only two castles producing elephants, but the elephant mass is going up there. A commander and crossbow behind that. Once again, smart guy a bit ignoring the siege department where we saw the Scops last game. And I would kind of like to see Scops with the Elephantos in this one as well. Bets are open, by the way, so you can risk some rocks for like about a minute and a bit left. Burst should win this when the rest runs out. But will the rest run out, right? Not that much in production, only two castles producing elephants there. Also means no siege, a little bit the no siege issue for Smart Guy again. The rams, I guess, there to catch the fire of the commander and crossbow. While the melee units take care of the elephants, which aren't in high enough numbers and are kind of getting tricked in. Ah, not enough elephants must there to do something with them. And Gora Sobi Bufas taking out all the crossbows because he is the one adding on it just this time. And not only after the game kind of has concluded but at the start this time the early honor tradition always important against elephants to make some bigger amount of damage to them and he's taking beautifully he's doing a beautiful job at taking out the crossbows and just put your points on smart guy by accident well, 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 maybe he can turn it around. You'll be happy in the end, but start definitely better for Gorosso Bufas here. And the 40 elephants in queue now in three castles. Not queuing them over these two, though. And a big old castle creep coming forward with the Tatars. Only Siege Rams as Siege. No Timurid Siegecraft trebuchets. We have castles so close to each other, the player's a bit allergic to traps, I feel. Oh boy, more good shots on the crossbow. Hand cannons would have been better than expo. Mm, yes. But I think scouts and some of his own onagers are better. Onage has no food call? Yeah. He really needs that. Well, it's 28 more elephants in the queue. If you mask them and make some siege rams and some trebuchets. You could push back, I think. <laughs> well played to the bot to change the voting positions. <laughs> Punishing people who don't read. I like it. Oh, elephants can down two classes too, I guess. Maybe we don't need siege. They actually take it down even though it gets out of there. This ton of kissing cast. It's like I I have I have how many cards do I have on my screen? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight cards on my screen. How many traps do I have on my screen? I don't have MP modes. Zero. They both have the rest for traps too. Oh, Goras wins. He killed two traps. Oh boy. More shots. Oh, that's another massive one. But I mean, the elephant numbers are quite decent now, but there won't be more coming because we have zero on food for Smart Guy. 
Imagine if they were playing on Pup, well, then we'd even have more gold for the Persians, but that isn't where they're struggling. They are struggling in the food department. Uh, granted, the Tatars are a bit too. And there's not too much army of the Tatar on the field, right? It's only Onagers, some Helvidiers. But Siege would have so much. I mean, we're just taking out castles with war elephants instead of making a single Trebuchet or Sea Tram. Is Vaka kind of winning this right now? If if he had, if he would just be using his gold and, and wood on, on Siege. I think he would be winning the game right now, even after the start. Yeah, fa faster than otherwise. But we clearly can't call it fast. Maybe are now taking them out, but I mean, there's also a castle, so the helps will die. It's very nice. Some Fudiko coming at minute 17. Versions as if they kind of need food right away. Also, some Fudiko for Goras, not in the most beautiful form. Pumps kind of looking better, the ones of oh, Smart Guy, but his opponent has Trebuchets, and that might be the decisive factor. If you really want to help um, Smart Guy here, I have two emotes that you could spam to help him out. Because he needs either of these two units. One elephant. Now it's only Commander and Crossbow. There could be so many traps. You a uh, trap! Q, a uh, trap! He doesn't need to wonder. Could he make a wonder? He could. He could actually go for a wonder. Petards? Um, yeah, I mean, he, I said he needs siege. So why not petards? I've been talking a lot about the other siege unit that we aren't seeing. There were no flaming camels, and then I favored the match of the Persians. Didn't account for them to not make anything that can really kill buildings. Hey, you have it! Where is the siege? Exactly! So I think Smart Guy would have had the game won five minutes ago if he made siege. He would have also had game 1 1 at around the 10 to 15 minute mark if he had siege. Um. You, when you trained with Smart Guy, probably should have told him about his siege strategy and what to do against it. Because I think if he didn't have a siege strategy, he would have won the set. Ah, yeah, yeah. Game two, he made siege. He made scorpions and like a few rams. That was enough siege. He won the game. But game one and game three, he's refusing to make a siege workshop. Oh no, actually, he made siege workshops! He's just refusing to make siege. But we got the workshops. Now it's only Commander and Crossbow, which are uh, somewhat countered by the Honor Gerinos. I remember like casting these a bit lower ELO DM games, and that's also where the trap emote originates from, right? It's the reason I have a trap emote in like Valhalla DM tournaments. Um that they were made that was meant for situations where people don't make traps, even though they had the game one if they have siege. Yeah, Queen could also use more traps. Oh, he's making. He's making, yes, five now. Five is a good number. Uh, they will lose this on it just. Okay, some more. KD only eight ahead for the Persian. Persians. Should normally have a way better KD. Oh! We have Siege! We have Bombard Cannons! Not the Siege unit I meant, but okay, yeah, if he can kill the traps and he can not kill the traps because it's Timur at Siege, we have traps and they can't have Bombard Cannons. Um, uh, it's the second one. Elf Siege, just the strongest combo. Elephant Siege would have been the strongest combo.
But yeah, I would, I would also cry out for helps because my get the start right. Is there a raid? No. With Kevin. Apparently it started with scouting Kevin. All these on shots on the commander and crossbow man. Uh, depends on how that was siege you have. Siege in war siege is the strong Are you all placing siege while watching a game with... I guess the go after even faster siege. Yeah, still three traps. Yeah, I would like to see more siege out of Kuras as well. I mean, he has 4k wood and 8k gold. The resources are looking good for, but there's zero army! Only the, the scouting cabinet it isn't really army. Because Mark guy. Oh boy, and also not much army. Like, both aren't producing military, really. One had 22 pop against 70 pop. And not a single unit cute. Not even a villager cute. What is this? They drop both drop? Three villagers queue, that's all the queues. Five villagers and three villagers. But for a moment we had nothing in the queue. For either player in a DM game. Oh boy. 94 plus scores is the strongest combo. <laughs> that worked indeed. Those of you who joined later, that's what we saw in game number two. Watch it back if you missed it. That was the best game of the set. Sometimes you need a moment to think and not queue units. Um, yeah, moment, but not three minutes. Game is about to end in a dominant fashion. Mm -hmm. I don't think the GG is moved away. Hello, the raid. Okay, uh, uh, we're making siege now. We're making onagers, and we're making paladins to raid. No, why not? Interesting choice. There is chemists for the Tatar, so it's the game turning move. Very lot of exposed. Farms like around mills everywhere though. So Gras is easy to raid. I should remember that. So I'm probably gonna play him next. My gains became a must. Nice. Hope I'm gaining a lot from those ads. It's really good for viewership to disable the pre roll ads. That scheme to say this time. The more on it was on the field for the Tatar player. On it just have died. Camels now coming out here. Well, at least army is being made. Ginormous resource for Goa's Toby Bufas, who is still not pop capped, but could very easily be. Some more camels, some more onagers, all that is in the queue, but smart guy only making some camels and directly offering them to the opponent, and it isn't looking good for the player in the orange. He will, do a, he will die to a white breakfast brush. Um, I'm, I'm playing a bit, right? Yo, both horse, fire on now! Oh yes, you're here, and I'm here. What could be more? Oh, yes. A fix, meaning they by the real fix or by doing something to your headlock. Oh, it's spoilers! Spoilers! Not really. Last castle going down. They guess the GG is being called in. 
yeah, I mean, so far no good measures, just wait for the game to be edited. Finally siege by you! Finally siege by smart guy. Back every game by the player who lost, we saw siege way too late. Thumbs up the set. The mark has been killed. The GG is called Guras Tobi Bufas goes to the best of five round against an otter and smart guy will be looking forward to the silver league potentially yeah uh, i think some main pointers for you smart guy is don't leave room for farms around your tc you won't need them there um make the buildings like one tile away from your town center and then the biggest, biggest issue that lost you the two games that you lost. Make Siege. I think you could have game won game one if you made Siege run just with your push. Um, and traps like far quicker. Um, and in this game you also had the push. You were taking down castles with elephants. If you just had either ramps or like 8 to 10 traps with that, I think you win the game. You had these death ball sieves, um, kind of in all three games. You had really nice death ball sieves, and the death ball was only deadly when you added the ramps in game two. And in the other two games, the pushes were just not deadly enough because, well, no siege. Um, but really nice set, really nice close games here. Um, obviously, both bleep uh, very new to deathmatch. So we saw some interesting games. We saw me and Chad complain a lot about Siege missing. Um, but we also saw some great games. I think game two was fantastic. And uh, really thankful for new people trying out DM, giving their all in the tournament. So yeah, well played to you both. And a really nice 2-1 set there. Um, and I think it's really nice for the like four lowest seats to have like good sets in the tournament. And then also a good start to some preparation for Silver League potentially. And yeah, I think you mainly choose other build order and teach. Or like areas to focus for, for working on. Statisticos! We do have 600 kills for the Tatars. Tatars should probably not have more kills in this matchup. Um, usually Persians with a very good KD. Better eco development by Gorov Tobi Bufas, but at the start actually was better for Smart Guy, as you can see here. And build account for Guras as well, even though there could have been a deadly Persian push with more siege, but I think that's gonna be the last time that I'm gonna sit siege now. And I am gonna give the score point to Guras. Who takes the set 2 1? Don't forget to post the Rex, one of you. And remember the spoiler tag. And then I'll try to instantly schedule with Goros. 